Welcome to our Electron line. So far we've been able to handle every unit or every combination of units with the three basic units of meters for length, kilograms for mass, and seconds for time. Well, this is going to change because now we're entering the world of physics that has to do with electricity and magnetism. So we need one more basic unit, and that is the unit of charge. Now the smallest unit of charge that we have in nature, if you disregard quarks for a moment, is the charge of an electron, which is the same as the charge of a proton. They're just different. One is negative and the other one is positive. But you can say that the magnitude of electron charge is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So what's a coulomb? Well, a coulomb is now the standard unit of charge in physics. And one coulomb is defined as a total of 6.24 times 10 to the 18 times a single electron charge. So when you put together 6.24 times 10 to the minus 18 electrons, you'll have one coulomb of charge. Now that would be hard to do to sequester that many electrons because they repel each other with an enormous amount of force. Now the Coulomb's law is defined as the force between any two charged objects as being equal to a constant and we'll define the constant in a moment, times the product of the charges of the two charged objects divided by the distance between them squared. Q1 and Q2 is typically expressed in terms of Coulombs. Now K is that constant which is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi times epsilon sub naught. Now epsilon sub naught is what we call the permittivity of free space. It has to do with how the electric field interacts with space and so therefore we have that constant. Now 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, known as k, is equal to 8.988 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Or as we usually use, we round it off to simply 9 times 10 to the minus 9. If you calculate that epsilon sub naught, which is called the permittivity of free space, it is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared. What's really interesting to look at is if we now take k, we can actually have k expressed in terms of the speed of light squared. It is 10 to the minus 7 times newtons, second squared divided by coulomb squared, those are the units, times c squared. Or, if you leave the units off for a moment, just numerically, the absolute value, the value of k, is equal to 10 to the minus 7 times c squared, where the speed of light is almost 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's quite an amazing here, amazement that there's something related to the speed of light and the constant k, which is related to permittivity of free space, which again, like I said, there's some interaction between space and the electric field that allows the speed of light to be a certain number. Now let's go back to our Coulomb's Law equation. On the left side we have force, and we know the units of force are equal to newtons. So this here will give us the units of newtons, which means that we had to give the proper units for k so that the right side would also be in terms of newtons. Well, let's find out. So we'll take this portion here and, and come up with the newtons, or I should say come up with the units, which hopefully will reduce the newtons. k was defined to have the units of newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And we have then the product of the two charges, which is coulombs times coulombs, divided by the distance between them squared, that would be meters squared. Note that the meters cancel out, the coulombs cancel out, and sure enough, we get the units of newtons on the right side, which is what we would expect. Of course, that was done intentionally by giving k the proper units, so that it would reduce to newtons on both sides of the equation. And that's Newton's, so that's what we call Coulomb's law, and the units associated with the standard charge and the constants k and epsilon sub naught. And that's how it is.